Could this be the best new entry level drone for beginners? Well, by the end of this video, you will know everything you need to know about the new DJI Mini 3, all this coming up and more. Hey everyone, Matthew here and this has been an incredible year for drones, hasn't it? Feels like every few months we've had an awesome new drone be released. Lately we've had the DJI Mini 3 Pro, then we had the Avatar, that awesome FPV drone, and a few weeks back we had the Mavic 3 Classic, and now this, the new DJI Mini 3. I have had the privilege of being able to fly this drone for the past few weeks, and today I wanted to share with you the specs, features, things I have discovered and comparisons between the Mini 2 and Mini 3 Pro. I also have three codes for one year of DJI Carry Fresh for free to give away. DJI Carry Fresh can help protect your drone against accidental damage or flyaways. All you have to do to enter is drop a comment down below, so why not do that now? And later in the video, I will go into more details about the competition and DJI Carry Fresh. Below, you will find timestamps so that you can rewind or jump to see a specific feature or comparison at any time. So if you are considering buying this drone, let's jump right in with what's in the box. This is the DJI Mini 3 Fly More Combo, which would be my pick if it's your first drone, as it contains a shoulder bag to carry it around, three batteries to give you plenty of flight time, and a charging hub so you can charge all in batteries at once. Inside the box, we have the shoulder bag, the drone, the DJI RC, that's the controller with the screen built in, three batteries, two inside the charging hub, which also comes with this fine work combo, and one inside the drone. Six sets of spare propellers, and a USB-C cable, and a Type-C cable. Looking at the ultra portable design of the Mini 3, and you can see this drone is very similar to the Mini 3 Pro. At the front, we have the camera and gimbal, which can rotate to allow vertical video, just like the Pro model. The gimbal can tell upwards to 60 degrees and has an unobstructed view thanks to this cutout along the top of the drone. As the Mini 3 doesn't have forwards or backwards obstacle avoidance, we instead get these two large vents on the front which help with cooling. In terms of cooling, there is also vents along the top and on the bottom. The arms can be folded out in any order, and the front arms have new longer feet that will give it more stability when landing on uneven surfaces. The battery slides in the back and locks into place. To remove the battery, you press the two side tabs together, and this unlocks the battery to be slid back out. The DJI Mini 3 weighs 249 grams, and this is the same as the DJI Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 2, helping keep it regulation friendly. If using the Intelligent Flight Battery Plus, then the drone and battery weighs 290 grams in total. When folded, the Mini 3 is a tiny bit larger than the Mini 3 Pro due to the additional feet on the front legs. It is also a tiny bit taller when unfolded for the same reason. Although we are only talking two to three millimeter. Side by side, they are basically the same size. Compared to the Mini 2, the Mini 3 is larger folded and unfolded, but this is due to its larger propellers and aerodynamic design, which help with improved speed, wind resistance, and flight time. Due to the Mini 3's weight, the drone is very regulation friendly, meaning you are much less restricted in where you can fly it, making this a perfect travel drone. Quickly looking at the cap on the camera, which you can twist to remove, you might notice this is identical to the Mini 3 Pro. This means that any ND filters which are currently available for the Mini 3 Pro can fit on the Mini 3. The Mini 3 has no internal storage, which means you will need to use a micro SD card with it. This is the same as the Mini 2, however the Mini 3 Pro does have 1.2 gigabytes of internal storage. The micro SD card can be inserted just above the battery on the back of the drone, and to remove it, you simply push it in and it will eject. On screen now are recommended micro SD cards to use by this drone, and I will put links in the description where you can pick them up. Let's now take a look at the camera, which is largely the same as the Mini 3 Pro, but does differ in some areas, and for an entry level drone is absolutely fantastic. We have a lot to go through, but first let's look at some of the clips I was able to capture over the past few weeks across Northern Ireland.
behind the gimbal guard, which differs to some early Mini 3 Pro models by not having Strex on the inside and therefore making it much easier to put on, is a 3-axis tilt, roll and pan, stabilised 1 over 1.3 inch CMOS sensor. This is the same fantastic camera as the DJI Mini 3 Pro and offers a healthy upgrade over the 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor of the Mini 2. This bigger sensor will help provide better image quality and performance in low light, such as at night. The 12 megapixel sensor also has a 4-in-1 design, which means that each pixel is divided into 4 sections that can be read separately or together, again to give greater performance when shooting at night. The aperture is f1.7, another healthy upgrade over the DJI Mini 2's aperture of f2.8. The DJI Mini 3 has an ISO range of 100 to 3200 for videos and photos. For resolution, you can record at 4K at 24, 25 and 30 FPS, and at 2.7K and 1080p up to 60 FPS. There is no slow motion, however, available on the Mini 3. The Mini 3 records in MP4 format and in the H.264 codec. There is no option to change the format to MOV or the codec to H.265 as you get on the Mini 3 Pro. For photos, you can capture beautiful 12 megapixel shots in either JPEG or RAW. JPEG being great if you want the photo ready to go from the drone to share in things like social media as quickly as possible, and RAW if you want the benefits of more information when editing. And you can capture these images in either 4x3 or 16x9 aspect ratio. On screen now is a photo comparison between similar shots taken with the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro. I tried my hardest to take these at nearly the same time, give or take a few minutes, and to keep perspectives the same, but I have tried to match them up as best as possible. The Mini 3 comes with two modes for controlling the camera. Auto, where the drone adjusts ISO and shutter speed automatically to get the exposure right, and Pro mode, which allows you to manually control ISO and shutter speed. You can also manually control white balance or let the drone adjust this automatically. The Mini 3 comes with the same incredible dual native ISO system as the Mini 3 Pro. This is automatically available when using 30 FPS or less and combines two ISO settings, a low gain for bright areas and a high gain for dim areas to capture more details. The Mini 3 only has a normal color profile, which provides beautiful and saturated video that is ready to use straight from the drone. This is great if you are looking to record video and immediately or quickly be able to post it online to share with family, friends or on social media and will suit flyers who don't plan to colour grade the videos they get with their drone. This does mean that 10 bit decine like is not available if you like to colour grade your footage and are looking a flatter colour profile. So if that is important to you then the DJI Mini 3 Pro would be the better option. That being said, 100% of the clips I have captured with the DJI Mini 3 Pro in the past have been in the normal color profile. I find the videos and colors look great, ready to go from the drone, and you can still color grade them a little such as bringing up exposure or boosting saturation if you like, and it cuts down on editing time. Although the Mini 3 and the Pro share the same sensor, I did a quick video comparison between the two. Again, these were taken at nearly the same time with a few minutes between them, and I tried to keep the perspectives as close as possible. The Mini 3 has a digital zoom functionality, which can be used by turning the scroll wheel on the back of the controller or by tapping the zoom button on the screen. When in 4K, you can zoom up to two times digitally, three times in 2.7K, and four times when recording in 1080p. You can also zoom up to two times when capturing 12 megapixel photos. Alongside the dual native ISO and low aperture, the Mini 3 is capable of capturing beautiful footage at nighttime. Here's a few examples of videos taken using this drone. The DJI Mini 3 has a max video bitrate of 100 megabits per second. Bitrate indicates the amount of data that can be transferred at any given moment. So the higher the number, the better the quality at which the video is being stored. As the gimbal the camera sits on is exactly the same as the Mini 3 Pro, we get the same vertical mode capability. 
by simply tapping the vertical mode button on the screen, the camera will rotate to allow you to capture vertical videos in 4K without the need to crop your footage. This is perfect for capturing videos to watch on your smartphone or to post on social media apps such as Instagram or TikTok. A feature that the Mini 2 had that wasn't available in the Mini 3 Pro that helped with hand launching was the nudge takeoff. Happily, this is available on the Mini 3 and you can do it by simply starting the props by pushing the joysticks downwards and inwards and then while holding the drone, gently nudge it upwards and the drone will take off from your hand. The only thing I have noticed when using this nudge takeoff method is that you must nudge the drone very quickly after starting the propellers as if you leave it too long then the nudge method won't work. This drone has a level 5 wind resistance and can handle wind speeds of up to 10.7 meters per second which is very impressive for such a light drone and this means that you can continue recording on them windy days. This is also an improvement over the Mini 2's wind resistance of 8.5 to 10.5 meters per second. During the entire time creating this video, the wind speeds have been super high across Northern Ireland. It's almost like they knew there was a deadline to hit. But this little Mini 3 has handled them wind speeds very impressively considering its size and weight. One of the biggest differences between the Mini 3 and Mini 3 Pro is that the Mini 3 only has downward obstacle avoidance. It cannot sense forward or backwards, meaning that if you encounter an obstacle from the front or back, the drone will not stop itself. This also means you do not get the APAS bypass mode, which would allow the drone to fly around obstacles it senses automatically. So you need to be more careful when flying the Mini 3 to make sure that the drone is clear off all obstacles at all times. The other thing to be aware of is that although the Mini 3 does sense downward, it will not display any obstacles as an alert on your screen when it does detect them like the Pro does. The DJI Mini 3 Pro can ascend up to 5 meters per second and descend at 3.5 meters per second. When in sports mode, the max speed you can fly horizontally is 16 meters per second or 35 mile per hour. In normal mode, you can fly at 10 meters per second or 22 mile per hour and 6 meters per second or 13 mile per hour in semi mode. One of the best things about the DJI Mini 3 is its noise. It's extremely quiet. When this drone is hovering in the air above you, there's times it can be hard to hear it at all. There's been a few occasions where I've brought the drone back and only once it's right above me can I finally hear it again. Here is a comparison between the DJI Mini 3 and the DJI Mini 2 along with a few other drones. A longer flight time gives you more time to explore your location, prepare for recording and get the shots you need. The batteries, which are the same as and cross compatible with the Mini 3 Pro, allow for a flight time of up to 38 minutes. This is actually 4 minutes more than the Mini 3 Pro and I guess the reason for this is that the Mini 3 Pro draws more power to use its obstacle avoiding sensors during flight and 7 minutes more than the Mini 2. To test this, I went out and recorded how long the battery took to drain from 100% to 1% while hovering. Now the wind speed was fairly high at around 8 to 9 meters per second and the total flight time I achieved was 31 minutes. Considering the high wind speed this little drone was fighting against, I thought this was pretty impressive. If you want even more flight time, you can get the plus versions of the batteries which allow an impressive flight time of 51 minutes. These batteries do increase the drone's weight to 290 grams, however, and unfortunately are unavailable in the EU. When charging the batteries using the two-way charging hub, you will be able to charge one battery in around one hour and 20 minutes, which is around four hours for all three batteries. The plus batteries take slightly longer at around one hour and 40 minutes per battery. Another difference between the Mini 3 and the Pro version is the fact that the Mini 3 uses AugieSync 2.0, which is the same transmission system as the Mini 2 and Mavic Air 2, and the Pro uses AugieSync 3.0. When watching the video feed transmitted from the drone to the controller, the quality will be in 720p at 30 fps. The max range for the Mini 3 
is 10 kilometers FCC and 6 kilometers CE with no interference. However, if flying in areas with strong interference, such as an urban landscape, you will more likely get 1.5 to 3 kilometers range. Medium interference, such as the countryside, 3 to 6 kilometers, and areas of low interference, such as the seaside, approximately 6 to 10 kilometers range. Again, these are FCC figures, so expect them to be lower if flying in the EU or UK. When it comes to taking photos, you can capture a single shot photo at 12 megapixel. The photos taken with this drone look absolutely incredible and I was super impressed with them. You can also do AEB frames, which stands for Automatic Exposure Bracketing, which is where you take a normal, under and overexposed image and then combine them for more dynamic range. Lastly, we have timed shooting, which would be great if you wanted to take a family photo, but need to give yourself time to hide the controller and the delay can range from two seconds to 60 seconds. Although the minimum delay changes from two to five seconds if shooting in RAW. The Mini 3 is also capable of capturing wide 3x3 panorama photos and 180 panorama images, which are great for capturing large landscapes such as coastlines. You can also capture 360 sphere panoramas, which when stitched together, allow you to look around and see the full environment. You don't, however, get the vertical panorama mode that the Mini 3 Pro has, and the resolution of the panoramas is lower than that of the Pro. Now, there is no active tracking on the Mini 3. So if you require a drone to record and track yourself doing activities such as hiking, cycling, or exploring, then the Mini 3 Pro will be a better option. If you are a beginner and not experienced in doing drone moves or want cool clips quickly, you can use quick shots. This mode allows the drone to fly and move automatically to create epic clips. And it's also great for capturing yourself, friends or family camping, at the beach, hiking, etc. With the Mini 3, you have the Drone, Rocket, Circle, Helix and Boomerang. The only one that you don't get that is on the Mini 3 Pro is the Asteroid. All these quick shots also work in vertical mode. So you can capture these drone moves in the vertical aspect ratio, which will look great on your phone or in social media apps such as Instagram. The only difference you will notice with quick shots compared to a Mini 3 Pro, for example, is that instead of a tracking box around the subject, with the Mini 3, you get this little place marker icon instead. Now, something I learned while testing the Mini 3 is that if you move during a quick shot, the drone will actually track your movement. This isn't perfect if you're in an area with lots of moving subjects or have a complicated background, for example, then it will stop tracking you. But when done carefully, you can use this to add more dynamic movement to your clips. The Mini 3 also comes with quick transfer. Super handy for getting the high resolution videos and photos off your drone and onto your phone wirelessly and quickly for posting online. To use this mode, turn your drone on and then simply tap the quick transfer prompt on the DJI Fly app on your phone. Follow the steps to connect them together and then you can simply download the files. If you are considering buying the Mini 3 or the Mini 3 Pro, you might wonder which is the best drone for you. Let's now quickly talk through the main differences between these two drones so that you can make an informed decision and decide if a feature is important for you to have or not. When it comes to the design, the two major differences are that the Mini 3 does not have obstacle avoidance sensors featured on the Mini 3 Pro. Instead, these are vents for cooling. The Mini 3 also has longer feet on the front legs compared to the Mini 3 Pro and these help with stability when landing. The weight between the two drones is the same, and although the Mini 3 is marginally larger, you won't notice these size differences, and they are basically the same. In terms of the official flight time, the Mini 3 has a slight edge over the Mini 3 Pro. The Mini 3's 38 minutes flight time is actually four minutes more than the Pro. The two drones share the same camera. This means the sensor size and aperture are the same. The gimbal is also the same, offering three axis stabilization and allowing the same amount of upwards and downwards tilt and including vertical mode. The differences are software related. The Mini 3 does not have decenny like color profile and a lower max ISO of 3200 compared to the Pro's max ISO of 6400. You can also record at 4K up to 60 FPS on the Mini 3 Pro, but only 30 FPS on the Mini 3. 60 FPS modes are available on both drones for 2.7K and 1080p. 
When it comes to taking photos, the Mini 3 captures 12 megapixel shots, whereas the Mini 3 Pro can capture larger 48 megapixel shots. You also don't have as many panorama modes and no hyperlapse functionality on the Mini 3. The two big feature differences between these two drones are a lack of active tracking and a lack of front and back obstacle avoidance on the Mini 3. There is no tracking functionality available on the Mini 3, so you won't be able to track yourself doing activities such as running or riding a bike. And with no front or back obstacle avoidance, you will also need to be more careful when flying to make sure that the drone doesn't come close to obstacles. The Mini 3 Pro also comes with 1.2 gigabytes of internal storage, which isn't much, but is more than the Mini 3, which has none. Now there are various settings and menu differences between the Mini 3 and the Mini 3 Pro. Major ones include no aperture or ISO priority in the Mini 3, and no style parameters to adjust the sharpness and noise reduction of the videos. Now we can discuss the differences between the Mini 3 and the Pro without discussing the cost. The Mini 3 comes in at a cheaper price point, making it more accessible and affordable over its bigger brother, the Pro. So if you want to dip your toes into the world of taking videos and images with a drone without a huge upfront investment, then the Mini 3 would be a great choice while still allowing you to capture incredible videos and images. Or if you don't think that you will require things like active tracking or obstacle avoidance for your needs, then you could save yourself some money by picking up the Mini 3 and use that money saved to get things like the DJI RC with the screen or purchase the Fly More bundle. So let me give you my thoughts as to who I think these drones are best suited to depending on your needs. If you are buying your first drone and plan to capture videos and photos of scenic locations in your area, or get quick snaps of your family on holidays and plan to do all your flying high in the air away from obstacles, then the Mini 3 will suit your needs. If you also have no idea how to color grade and just want clips that you can put in your phone straight away and post online, the Mini 3 will also be good enough with its normal color profile, which as mentioned is the color profile I use all the time on the Mini 3 Pro and now the Mini 3 and I think looks fantastic. Lastly, if you aren't looking a drone to track yourself doing activities such as running, hiking, exploring or cycling and plan to do all your flying manually, then the Mini 3 will be more than good enough for your needs. This drone will be able to handle all them scenarios and at a cheaper price point compared to the Mini 3 Pro. If however you are looking at a drone that can fly in areas with lots of obstacles and want to make sure it stays safe at all times, then the obstacle avoidance on the Mini 3 Pro will be beneficial. If you also want to color grade your clips to get the most from them, then you will need the Mini 3 Pro to avail of its 10-bit decine light color profile. Lastly, and probably the biggest factor, is if you do want a drone to track yourself doing them activities when you're out exploring, out running, or out cycling, then you will want the Mini 3 Pro for its awesome tracking capabilities. These are only a few of the factors, but I think these are the biggest ones which will help you decide between these two drones. Now, if you currently have a Mini 2 and didn't upgrade to the Mini 3 Pro, what are the upgrades and design advantages of the Mini 3 over the Mini 2? Compared to the DJI Mini 2, the Mini 3 has a much improved camera system, a larger sensor, lower aperture, and dual native ISO, which will give you higher quality videos and much better low light performance. It also has a longer flight time and can allow vertical recording, great for clips that are intended to post on social media apps such as Instagram. You also get that larger gimbal angle, which can be great for getting creative shots and allowing you to look up further. Lastly, it is also much quieter, allowing you to draw less attention when you're out flying, which as a beginner, is a massive advantage. If you currently have a Mini 2 and are looking better video quality, better low light performance and a longer flight time, then the Mini 3 is a great upgrade. The Mini 3, like many new DJI drones, is compatible with the DJI RC M1 controller and the newer DJI RC controller. That's the one with the built-in screen. Now you might already be familiar with these controllers, but if you are completely new to drones, the primary differences between these two controllers are that the DJI RC has a 5.5 inch built-in touchscreen with the DJI Fly App installed, whereas the RC N1 requires you attach your phone and use the DJI Fly App on it to control the drone. You also get additional function buttons and an extra scroll wheel on the DJI RC over the RCN1. Now when it comes to pricing, you have tons of options. If you currently have a DJI RCN1 or a DJI RC controller, you can pick up the DJI Mini 3 on its own. 
If you don't have a controller, you can also purchase it with the DJI RC in one or the newer DJI RC controller. Again, that's the one with the screen. Next, there are two Flymore combos available, and this includes the drone, controller, two additional batteries making three in total, a charging hub, shoulder bag, and spare propellers. You can either get a Flymore combo with the DJI RC M1, or my pick would be the Flymore combo with the DJI RC, as this gives you everything you need to get started, a shoulder bag to carry the drone around, and multiple batteries so that you can make the most of any location you go flying at. Now I always recommend picking up DJI Care Refresh when purchasing a drone, but even more so with the Mini 3 because it doesn't have forwards or backwards obstacle avoidance. DJI Care Refresh, which is their version of insurance, will help you protect your investment by covering you for accidental damage that includes collisions, flyaways and water damage. I personally have DJI Care Refresh for all my drones. And to give you an example of turnaround times, I recently crashed my DJI Avata, cracking the frame, and so it needed replaced. I sent it back on a Tuesday, and I had a brand new one from DJI Care Refresh in my hands by the Friday. It was impressively quick. I will put a link down below in the description where you can read all about DJI Care Refresh. And I also have three codes for one year of DJI Care Refresh for free to give away. To be in with a chance of winning one of them codes, all you need to do is drop a comment down below. You can comment anything you like, and you must have purchased or be planning to purchase the new DJI Mini 3. I will be announcing these three winners on Wednesday the 20th of December. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning one of them codes, make sure to leave a comment down below before that date. I recommend just leaving a comment down below right now. If you're watching this video after Wednesday the 20th of December, I'm sorry the competition is now over, but I really do still recommend checking out DJI Care Refresh, as it can offer you a great peace of mind when you're out flying your drone. Now this is super important, so please listen carefully. As you may have noticed, YouTube is full of scam commenters right now. These people use software that automatically creates new YouTube accounts, copying the profile picture and using a similar name of YouTubers before mass replying to hundreds of comments, letting you know you've won a prize to try and lure you into giving them money. So please be super diligent. And when it comes time for me to announce the winners, I will reply to your comment, letting you know you've won. And you can verify that this is actually me by clicking the username and checking that it takes you through to my official YouTube page. I will also post the winners on my community page at the same time so you can verify the winners there. And if you do win, I will simply provide you the redeemable code for free. Good luck everybody. The Mini 3 and the Pro are both absolutely incredible and exceptional drones. You really can't go wrong with either. But I have to say I have been really, really impressed and I'm a big fan of the new Mini 3. I have absolutely loved my time flying this little drone over the past few weeks. I really thought I would miss the active tracking and obstacle avoidance features that the Pro has, but in reality for the type of flying that I do, which is capturing videos and photos of points of interest or scenic locations near me, and generally flying the drone high in the sky to get them perspectives, I really haven't went looking for active tracking or obstacle avoidance at any time when flying this drone and haven't missed them features. Although it has to be said, this will be completely dependent on the type of flying you do. If you're the kind of person who uses a drone to track yourself doing them activities, then the lack of active tracking will be much more noticeable if you use this drone. So who do I think this drone is for? Well, if you're looking for the best entry level beginner drone, then this is it. If you're just getting started with capturing videos and photos and have no idea how to color grade, or you're not interested in color grading and just want videos and photos that look great straight from the drone to post it online, then the Mini 3 will more than suit your needs. Also, if you aren't looking a drone to track yourself and you just want a drone to get videos and photos of scenic locations near you, or maybe get photos of your family and friends at the beach or on holiday, then the lack of tracking on the Mini 3 will not be a hindrance to you. You get an incredible camera system in a super compact, lightweight, portable, and importantly, regulation-friendly drone, which also makes this great for travel while saving some money over the Mini 3 Pro. I think the price point of this drone makes it great for somebody looking to get into drones for the first time. 
but still have a very capable drone that can capture exceptional videos and photos. If you would like to purchase this drone, I will put links in the description down below, which will take you through to the DJI store where you can pick this drone up. And before you go, if you like this video and you learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things drones and want to know how to get better photos and more cinematic videos with your drone, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your drone game. Make sure to subscribe and make sure that notification bell is ticked so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. If you want to stick around and see a few more now, here's a few I personally recommend. And I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.